While you might believe that creating an index in Word is complicated, it's actually quite easy. The length and complexity of the source material will affect how much effort this task requires, but I'll use one of my essays from law school to demonstrate the basics in this video. An index lists concepts that a reader might be interested in locating inside of a text in alphabetical order, showing the page numbers on which these concepts appear. Of course, someone could read the entire book to find these concepts, but this approach is often impractical. For example, if you had fresh strawberries and you wanted to see if any recipes in a cookbook use strawberries, it would make sense to look up strawberries in the index and then read only the recipes that include strawberries instead of reading the entire cookbook from cover to cover. The essay that I'm using is about the duty to accommodate in the context of Canadian employment law. I'm going to identify some of the keywords in this essay by highlighting the text. Here I'll choose Discrimination, then I'll go to the References tab, Index Group, Mark Entry, and I'll select Mark All because I want to include every instance of the word discrimination. The main entry is what you'll see in the actual index. I know something has been added to the index because on the Home tab, Paragraph Group, I've already toggled the Show Hide command to show hidden symbols, so I can see the label XE and curly brackets around the word discrimination. These are only parts of the electronic document and will not print out. If I wanted to reduce the visual clutter, I could click on Show Hide again, and this notation will disappear. But I'll leave it activated for now. Keep in mind that only the first instance is marked on each page because you would use the index to find the entire page. So I do not see the symbols for the index entry here, but on the next page, it does appear. You can also mark a phrase as an index entry instead of a single word. This time I'll choose Undo Hardship, and I'll add to the index by clicking Mark All. I'm going to continue making several more entries so the index will look more complete once I generate it. The purpose of a cross-reference is to help readers find index entries that are related to the item that they first looked at. For example, a thoughtfully composed index in a cookbook might direct someone who looks up a French word that some English speakers use, like courgette, to zucchini by including a cross-reference. If I were compiling this index in a comprehensive way for publication, I would include several cross-references, but for now I'll use the example of Ontario's Human Rights Code because after it first appears, it will just be referred to as the code, since shortening this phrase would make sense to most readers with legal training in Ontario. In effect, I'm planning to help someone who looks up Human Rights Code in the index to find the places where the essay refers to the statute. After I highlight Human Rights Code, I'll go to Mark Entry, Cross Reference, and I'll type C Code. When you're ready to generate the index, place your insertion point where you wish for the index to begin. Go to the References tab, Index Group, and select Insert Index. You can customize the appearance of your index by changing the settings in this interface. I'll just click on OK. The index appears, and to make it easier to read, I'll go back to the Home tab and remove the Show Hide command. 